to be in thine presence. Knowing, Lord, there is no place we can come and lay down our burdens except in such an atmosphere as this. And for sure, Lord, we feel a change each time we come in this atmosphere. And we can testify that your invitation is still alive even today. When you say it, come ye all that are laboring and are heavily laden and I will give you rest. You spoke about rest of our souls. We may not have all the worldly things and what the people out there have to be counted amongst the great. But this portion of your life that thou has given us, it is satisfaction to our beings. Like the singer said, you can have all the world, but give me Jesus. Father, that is how we feel because we can never get enough of you. Every time we hear your word, we feel that nourishing effect in our souls to know that we are never alone. You speak in your word, you say, in a little while, the world will see me not, but yet you shall see me because I shall be with you, even in you, unto the end of the world. And we believe right now you are with us. Great pillar of fire. You appeared in 63. You came down under the shout. The message of Malachi 4 to gather us your bride. And now after the death of Malachi 4, the Elijah of our day. Dear God, we can see you coming and disappearing in our lives, expounding the word, showing us our place, giving us courage and assurance that we have not believed cunningly devised fables, but we have believed the true living word of God. And Lord, indeed, it's our anchor as we press towards the mark of the high calling in Christ. We see many falling, even in this path, many backsliding, many choosing other faith, but yet we standing, Lord, because we have seen something real, something supernatural about what we have received. We have seen something that goes beyond religion. We have seen something that is addictive. And Lord, it is your love. Your love is addictive. When you look into the word and see the sacrifice that you made for us to be where we are, at, when we look beyond the humanistic realm, before time began, oh God, we, we test things that are unimaginable, inconceivable, the invisible things that are inaudible, things that cannot be told by the tongue, things that the eye cannot see. And we thank you, Lord, for making us blessed partakers of divine nature. Lord, it gives us confidence to stand knowing no weapon fashioned against us will ever prosper. It gives us courage to stand, knowing that even though the enemy would come in like a flood, you have already lifted up a standard against him. And there is no temptation that will come to your pride, but such as is common unto men. And whatever you allow, thou hast promised that you have given us power and overcoming grace to tunnel through. And we believe nothing is going wrong. Especially now as we are coming under your Holy Ghost. Especially now as we are saying, Thy will be done, not our will. Especially now when you are taking over our minds. When you are taking over our bodies. We know nothing is going wrong. Because you are the highest office of appeal. When you say yes, no man can say no. Where you close, no man can open. And today we are not going to give credit to Satan. He is just a creature of time. Working under your allowance. He has no power to hurt us. He has no power to change our eternal destiny. He has no power 
to drive our lives where you want it. It is under your allowance. That's why we come and give you glory. That's why we come and say nothing is going wrong. Because all things work together for good to them that love God and are called according to his purpose. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your mighty touch. Thank you for the angels that are right in this building. Thank you for a supernatural effect that is marauding the earth of your children. Thank you for rapturing faith, for translation grace in this climax age. Thank you, Lord, for inspiring our faith to greater heights. Thank you, Lord, for reminding us that we were with you before the foundation of the world. Thank you, Lord, for showing us our names in the left section of the book of life. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Lord, for revealing our mission and our commission in such a world as this. May you forgive all sins and trespasses now. May you break all middle walls of partitions now. May you address every hand that is raised now. Your children are raising their hands to you because they have confidence that they will not walk out of this building the same way they came in. And we believe truly, Lord, you will never put to shame any man that put his trust in thee. Supply all our needs as thine will prevail. Attend to our family lives. Attend, oh God, to our work issues. Attend, oh God, to our every aspect of life that may bother us. That we can stand and say, we serve a mighty God. We hear it and answer it prayer. We appreciate you for the songs of Zion. Special songs that's been rendered our, our hearts are ready Lord to hear from you oh come and have your way take me the preacher of the gospel please hide me behind the cross of Calvary let me not speak of my own but undertake for me you know I have nothing I can give to your children I'm trusting upon your leadership and inspiration I'm weak and weary but thou art strong and we are praying Lord that you have the preeminence and the leading in everything that shall be done for this moment in time. Let no one leave this building the same way they came in. We're dedicating all into your hands as we surrender our beings to you. In Jesus name we pray and everybody say Amen. As we give a hand of praise. Amen and amen. God will richly bless you. Shall we temporarily take our seats? I'd like to welcome you once again. In the house of the Lord. Say certainly deemed it a grand privilege to be back again. Praise the Lord. And um, I'd like to acknowledge some visitors uh, before we come to the word. Okay. Brother Farai is not a visitor. We will welcome him. I will ask him to stand. Praise the Lord. This Brother Farai. Bless you. We are happy to have you in service. And then Sanet was here last Friday or last week. And name was brought forward. I don't know where she is. Maybe she's outside. All right. Oh, there she is. Let's walk up to next. Bless you. You're welcome. 
You must help me when I can't locate them. Eh? All right. Praise the Lord. And we've got um, Wonati, Oposhia, his brother Sidney's mother. All right. I'll ask you to stand. Praise the Lord. Let's go come here. Bless you so much. We are very happy to have you. By the grace of God. I'm the one who was talking to you over the phone. God bless you. We certainly deem it a great privilege. And we trust God is something special for you today. Praise the Lord. You know, there is no greater joy to see a family together. Parents and children. So it gives me much joy when I see some of your parents you know, coming to hear what you are hearing. Now, you find that's how the enemy has managed to break down homes and families. He told them it's okay to eat supper together at night, to use the same surname, it's okay to use the same language. But when it comes to the faith, the devil said, no, you must go to that church. The other one must go to that church. And then now you find families crumbling. Because the devil knows what keeps a home is not using one language. Is, is, is not using the same sentence. But it is a unity under the same faith. It's that's, that's the oneness that the enemy cannot break. So may God bless you all. And we are very happy by the grace of God. I see Brother Richard. God bless you, Brother Richard. Maybe you can just stand so that we welcome you again. Brother Richard. Thank you so much. Very to have you all in the house of the Lord. And we are trusting that God is going to give us a blessing. God bless you, brother. Are you going to be baptized today? Next week. God bless you so much. Amen. We thank the Lord for everybody. Amen. And then um, I've got an announcement <coughs> from the wedding committee. They're saying uh, we've got two weddings like I've announced on the 30th of November and the 14th of December. The 30th of November is Brother Andani and Sister Ntanga. And then on the 14th of December is Brother Doc and Sister Sharon. So the wedding committee is saying, may you help us in any way you can. If you are inspired to assist in any way in these weddings, don't hesitate to see the trustees. They will direct you to the wedding committee. Now, this, these are weddings. Uh, these people are not visitors. They are children of the house. So, as our custom, maybe with our minds, with our you know, plans and everything, whatever, finances, let's support that these weddings become a success by the grace of God. And also another wedding I just realized that the dates were changed. Uh, brother Knowledge Wedding. Um, you were supposed to give me the accurate dates to announce 
But he told me that it should be in January. On the second. On the second, right? But right. the wedding will be on in, in January on the second. I think uh, the in Zimbabwe. They had many other commitments on the day that they were supposed to wed. So they requested that they shift their wedding. And it has been um, endorsed for the 2nd of January. So we include this wedding as well. In as far as your support is concerned. That we can have these things go smoothly. How many think that would be wonderful? Praise the Lord. We love to see these people cross. It's a showdown. When a man marries and a woman is married, so they need our support to cross that place. Praise the Lord. So, may the Lord richly bless you. Uh, we, uh, we appreciate our Friday service. How many enjoyed Friday service? Praise the Lord. Our precious brother Tinashe was preaching for us. And it was wonderful. A body change. And uh, let's pray for our ministers that God may keep them in well doing. Because it's a blessing when we see nutrients flowing from every part of the body in the local assembly. This is not a one man's ministry. Same spirit that has been put upon a pastor is the same that has been put in the fivefold ministry and the congregation. So we need to always cultivate one another in prayer that we can rise to that place. So we were moving with the um, subject rapturing faith. I'm sure there is something that needs to be silenced. I'm hearing the shh. Come again. It's my mic. All right. Maybe an instrument or something. But um, we're talking about rapturing faith for translation grace in the climax age. We're looking at the faith of this hour. Now we, we're considering faith is a revelation that every age has its own revelation and that revelation is intended to make alive the promise of that season and God rich in mercy he ends it to a star of that age and that star he brings it to the people it's alright and those who are ordained and predestined to be part of that great resurrection or that great translation they will receive that revelation because it is through that revelation that they are quickened and steered into that rapturing faith and that translation grace. Praise the Lord. And um, in all this, God was trying to make us consider the lateness of the hour and the expectation upon every believer. Now, faith <laughs> is a universal force to a point that um, 
Even those who don't believe in the word, they use faith to obtain what they want. The person who worships Buddha operates in the same dimension of faith. The person who practices witchcraft they also use faith. It's, it's a universal force. Like giving. If you give, you receive. Whether you're a Christian or you're not. It is just a universal force. You, you get the point. And then now even faith. When you give and you receive, it doesn't mean you go to heaven. You get the point. And also when you believe and your faith creates something, it doesn't make you a child of God. You get the point. But now when you talk about the faith of this hour, now it is that faith directed to the promise of the hour not on the general things some are having faith today and they are buying expensive cars some are building houses using faith others are getting healed of their bodies using faith you, you get the point but God in our day is here to direct our faith to his will. And the faith for this hour, it is the change of your body. And in a moment, and in a twinkle of an eye, you'll be raptured out of here for the third and final exodus. So by God's grace, we, we will continue and uh, look at this subject with the order of the rapture, looking at the seven thunders that brings that rapturing faith and see where it lives us as the local assembly. But today, we, we are going back to a subject that was paused. I'm sure if you are really a student of what we are doing here, you know many subjects are hanging. The book of Daniel is hanging. We are still going to continue with it. And then the mystery between the sixth and the seventh vial is hanging. And then we are still moving on that. And then the canonicity of the silent century is still hanging. So all these things, by God's grace, they come out all right at the appointed season. When God inspires, we, we, we get to them. So I felt inspired that we come back to the series we're having on the 11th hour workers. And we see how to progress. Now, um, we, we've got a number of diagrams. And I will request uh, the brothers on the projector to be preparing some of the diagrams that we were using so that it may make um, my job easy by the grace of God. Now, I'm sure we saw the 11th hour Jewish workers. And we saw them as logged between the 6th and the 7th seal. The mystery between the 6th and the 7th seal. It was Revelation chapter 7. 
which were the calling of the Jewish workers. And we saw the calling of the 11th hour Gentile workers. And these ones were logged in between the 6th trumpet and the 7th trumpet. Now this is chronology, scriptural chronology before we even talk about the revelation part of it. I'm seeing other people are getting discouraged before we start. Eh? <laughs> Say, Pastor, what are you talking about? We preached about these things. Eh? And uh, the word must remain fresh. But just pay attention. You understand it. So the 11th hour gentle workers they are between the 6th seal and the 7th seal and then we saw lying spirits like frogs between the 6th vial and the 7th vial now if you remember well when we began these mysteries we were focused on Daniel. And then Daniel 5 was leading us to the end of the Babylonian Empire which was the judgment of Belshazzar. And uh, that judgment was following a rejection of redemption which are the seals. Is that right? And then it was through Daniel chapter 4. We, we got the projection of the vials. Which I believe the vials we have gone through. Now, by, by the grace of God, we will try to refresh your memory as we will be proceeding. Where's Bra Shamu? Okay. If you can come closer, I would appreciate that he can help me with some of the diagrams. Is everything fine? All right. So, now... We will consider a couple of diagrams to just make things simple for you. Uh, maybe you can just bring the diagram of the book of Revelations. But that one, you bring it later. But let's, let's bring the one for the church ages, seals, trumpets, and vials. It's in, it's in brown. And then we'll be able to identify what we want by the grace of God. How many love the Lord? How many feel they can tackle this? Sure, brother. He said, Father, I thank you you have hidden this to the wise and prudent but you have revealed it unto babes such as would learn so I think you are babes such as would learn alright let's rise to our feet and then let's have Revelation chapter 12 we'll just get a place to start and then we see where God will take us from here. Praise the Lord. Now, we want to read from verse 1. It's the woman clothed with the sun and the main child. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. Now, 
Danga Lanaredi Fumimbi. And she being with child cried, travailing in birth and pained to be delivered. And over a mutu watovera. Achitaba mukosi Gauchi Kati Chau Shengera Gauto do Waporo. We know that this woman is Mary the Virgin. It's talking about the transition from the Old to the New Testament. Clothed with the sun. And the moon was under her feet. And we know the Old Testament is the shadow of the New Testament. Is that right? And then this woman was pregnant. And the Bible says in verse 3, and there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns, and seven crowns upon his head. And his tail drew a third part of the stars of heaven. And did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered. For to devour her child as soon as it was born. Adoba abona na limwe bono. Ambo ri limwe ditu. Dine langa li kwena li huru. Lotukao. Samuriru. Lato tanu nambiri. Na nanga zafumi. Na zuyara zitanu. Na zuyiri. Kazi to zaalo. Muchira. Walo wakumba mukobe muti. Wat. And now the red dragon it is Herod hunting for that main child. But you must know these are spirits, eh? Because the same spirit that was hunting for Moses at the time of his birth, Moses being a prophet like unto Christ, it is the same spirit hunting for the life of Jesus Christ. Are we together? And then you see how they killed all the children from three years going down looking for that main child. But they couldn't. And she brought forth a main child who was to rule all the nations with a rod of iron and the child was caught up unto God and to his throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness where she had a place prepared of God that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. And Musadi Abebamwana and the woman this is what always happens. God's seed can never fall into the hands of the enemy. It happened for Moses. The same with Christ. And even you and I. If you want to trace your life, some of you could have been aborted. Your parents will tell you that a mysterious thing took place. Some of you could have died young. Your parents will tell you a mysterious thing happened. Some of you, even the age you can remember, you saw the enemy almost taking you down. But a mysterious hand just pulled you out. Because that is always what happens with the seed of God. The devil has no power over it. He is an opportunist. He doesn't understand what God is going to do next. And because of that, he is an 
to trace the dynamics of the Holy Ghost. Because God who sees the enemy before he acts is able to make a way to escape whatever the enemy would have planned. That is how you've got an advantage over the wicked one. God doesn't know Satan doesn't know what God will do. But God knows what Satan will do. Praise be to God. Now, when you come to verse 7, the Bible says, and there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels, and prevailed not, neither was there a place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent, called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. Na paipili hurunge ita duru di chiri. Jino uchi zina manda na buhosi na mtimu washu zoferera na nungo za mtozo wawe. Ngauri mupeti wabaratu washu we aba achi zura achiba peta mtimuni masiari na busiku opande. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamp and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto the death. Therefore rejoice ye heavens that and he that dwell in them woo to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil is come down unto you having great wrath because he knoweth that he's, he hath but a short time. Babuya Baiswa Rufuni. Isone Takaraniha Inwi Mataturu Nabutura Hon. Yahweh Lipasi Narwanji. Gauri Diaboro Otsera Enepo Nabo Inwi Enambitikuru. Ajis with Diva Zauri Osterwa Gachipinga Chitu. May the Lord add blessings to the reading of his word. Let us pray. Mutzimu Enge the Zepatuche Zukobari Wai Pilawe and Garirape. Father, we thank you for the word we have read. May you please come and anoint it that it may inspire our faith. You bring to remembrance what we have learned that we can be able to apply the word in our everyday lives to see the modern events that are being vindicated by prophecy that we can walk worthy of your vocation. Bless us, take away the spirit of sleeping and slumber. Give us focus that we may be able to be where you have us to be. We ask it in Jesus' name. And everybody say, Amen. Praise God. Shall we take our seats? Brother, you can fix my mic. It's threatening to do feedback. Just make sure your gain is not too high. But don't punish us at the same time. Praise the Lord. Now, I'm sure we can see the war that began in heaven in Revelations chapter 12. There was war. And we are going to trace this war that started in heaven. 
because it is the war that uh, will come down here on earth and end up in the Armageddon battle. <coughs> and I'm sure we have seen how the devil has come down. We saw him ambitious. And then how he was trying to be like God. Saying, I will be like the most high God. I will establish my kingdom. And it will be higher than the kingdom of Michael. Is that right? And then with these five I wills in the book of Isaiah, God saw it that this person is not up to any good. And uh, because of that, because of that, he was cast down. And you find him in Eden, in the book of Ezekiel. Is that right? And then trouble began. As he made the battle that was once between angels to be the battle amongst men. Is that right? And then when you look at that, you see how sin crept into mankind through the serpent into Cain and the lineage that followed after. But you see also the kingdom of Michael. I think watch your, watch your monitors as well. Now, you, you, you see all these things coming to the showdown how God preserved the kingdom of Michael through Adam, Abel, you see Seth, and the lineages. It went like that. Is that right? And then when you see that, you find the enemy showing the same characteristics that he showed in heaven. Praise the Lord. So we will go through Revelation 12. But I want to take this quote where we will find our subject. This is the introductory part of the revelation of Jesus Christ, the church age books. Okay. The prophet says, though this volume will concern itself with various major doctrines, Praise the Lord. Such as the Godhead, water baptism, etc. Found in Revelations chapter 1 through 3. Its main theme is the setting forth of a detailed study of the seven church ages. And this is necessary in order to study and understand the rest of the revelation. Now meaning, if you want to understand the book of Revelation, you can bypass the seven church ages. Because it is through the church ages that you understand the entirety of the revelation. Like we are studying the book of Daniel, you see that God doesn't bring a new thing but he builds upon the same revelation chapter after chapter 
He adds more flesh, more light. At that tree that Nebuchadnezzar saw are actually the kingdoms. And these kingdoms in the image that he saw are the same beasts that you're going to see in Daniel 7. You get the point. So you find that the entire revelation is being expounded and made clearer as the chapters go forward. So even the church ages, you're going to find that whatever that you read in the rest of the book of Revelation, it is contained in that time frame of the Gentile dispensation. Is it right? So now these church ages, they are necessary in order to study and understand the rest of the revelation. Why? For out of the ages come the seals. And out of the seals come the trumpets. And out of the trumpets come the vials. Now we all know that the church ages they speak of intercession because this is the gentle dispensation the son of God era that God who was with us is Emmanuel the Lord Jesus he was now in us after he died he gave the ghost and he separated himself to everybody in the church. Is alright? And when he left his spirit, he went to the right hand side of the Father, making intercession for the ignorance of the church. Is that right? So this era is the era of intercession. And it is Revelations chapter 2 and 3. Chapter 1 is the day of the Lord. It is Jesus Christ. It gives you the fullest account of the book of Revelations. If you come to Revelations 1, verse 1, it will make it very clear that the revelation of Jesus Christ which God gave unto him to show unto his servants the things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. So this book of Revelation it is having three characters. It's like a drama with three main actors. We've got Jesus. We've got the signifying angel. And we have John. Praise be to God. Now Jesus Christ is the author of the book. Is the right? And the signifying angel is the one that tells John about the book and all the mysteries. It is this angel that interprets the entire book to John. And John is the type of the bride. In the book of Revelation, when you hear about John, you must see the bride. Praise the Lord. And now, that, that robber that makes people sleep at the beginning of the service is already here. He is right here. He wants you not to get what I'm talking about. Say to him, Satan, you are a liar. Leave me alone. I mean, I'm here for service. I'm not here to sleep. Praise God. If you miss this first part, it's almost impossible for you to understand where I want to come to. You will not even get it. You get the point. So it's a book of three main actors. 
So in the book of Revelations, you are John. Wherever you read about John, he's talking about you. Somebody say Amen. And the signifying angel. We went through it. If you come to Malachi 4, praise the Lord. Verse 1. What does the verse say? Verse 5. And then we'll see Malachi 4 verse 5 in line with Revelation 22, 16. Behold, I'll send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. I Behold I. This is Jesus. Behold I. Jesus. Yes. Who send you. You John. You understand. Elijah. Malachi 4. William Branham. William Branham. So behold I. Jesus. Yes. Sends you. Malachi 4. Malachi 4. William Branham. William Branham. Before the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Praise the Lord. God bless you, brother. Now you see what we are talking about. When you come to Revelations, Revelations chapter 22 verse 16 I Jesus is the same behold I you, you understand behold I Jesus is that right have sent mine angel Malachi 4 to testify unto you these things you John so I've got a diagram that I made I'm sure the brother would have it as well which shows you Malachi 4 verse 5 and Revelation 22 verse 16 so you begin to see before you sleep that I Jesus is Revelation 10 1 a mighty angel. Are we together? You. I, Jesus, send you. You are the bride. Revelation 10, 8 to 11. Send you Elijah. Elijah is the marriage officer. Who is Revelation 10, 7. Are we together? How many are seeing the picture? Praise be to God. Now these diagrams are there. It's the diagram to you. But if we can't get them, read the diagram in what I'm saying. Praise be to God. Are you getting it? All right. Now, as we move forward, you're already seeing intercession. Revelation 1 is clear. It is Christ himself. It's coming with a white wig. As the ancient of days. If you can bring the diagram. Now as the ancient of days. Is that right? Coming for judgment. Now we see him in chapter 1. And 2 and 3. It's from Ephesus to Laodicea. Is that right? And then when you come to verse chapter 4, chapter 4 is come up hither. It is the rapture. After the expiration of the church ages. Is that right? The church is taken up in the rapture. That's Revelation chapter 4. And then chapter 5. It is that book that no man could open or lose. No man could even open. look upon it. And we know that is the seven seal book of redemption. Is that right? And then 6. If you can bring that, that's the same one. And then 6. 
is now talking about the seals which is redemption. Are we together? But four and five we call them the bridge between the church ages and the seals. If you can just strike a balance with my mic brother and leave it, it will help me. Praise the Lord. Now are we together? Four and five it is the bridge. Now I want you to notice and then my subject maybe it will make it easy. Out of the trumpets come the vials. The mystery between the trumpets and the vials. Praise the Lord. Out of the trumpets come the vials. The mystery between the trumpets and the vials. Now, when you look at the bridge, is it right? It is Revelation chapter 4 and 5. Now, 6, it is the six seals six seals six seals is alright and then the seventh seal is Revelation 8.1 and these are talking about redemption is alright because it is that book that was containing the mystery of our redemption are we together friends Praise the Lord. And then trumpets. We know it is the restoration of Israel. The trumpets, we spoke about them. They are for the Jews. The seals. It's the Gentiles. And these trumpets, we see them restoring Israel back to the promised land. And we find them from the chapter 8. Chapter 8. Nine, and they finish off at chapter 11. And then the vials, the combo, it's judgment. Are you understanding that? Now you see, if you want to understand the story on this diagram, these church ages, they only come because Israel has rejected their Messiah. So the light departs from Israel and it comes to the Gentiles. That's where we have the church ages. Is it right? And the seals, this is the mystery of the redemption of the Gentiles. Are we together? Is it right? These are the seven thunders. Is it right? Those in the church ages will be redeemed by the seals which is not another Passover or a, a rekilling, but it's the revelation of the rejected Passover to us, the Gentiles. That Jesus who came to his own as a Jew, he comes also to us as a Gentile and awards us the same opportunity that the Jews had. Is it right? And then we talk about the trumpets. Those Jews that rejected him for us to start the church ages. Those Jews that crucified him they are brought back to recognize the one they rejected by the trumpets. Now we focused on the last three which was the first, second and the third world war. And we know it is through those wars that Israel was brought back to be a nation again through the trumpets. Is it right? And then when you come to the vials, the the vows are for word rejectors. Those that reject the word, those that reject the seals, they suffer the vows. And we saw it from Genesis that these two always come together. Mercy and judgment. Is it right? When you see Cain receiving the vial, as you locate him in the first vial, it was because he had rejected the revelation of the lamp given to Abel. He got a mark. 
And he was cut out of God's commonwealth. You get the point. Everybody huh? received redemption. Cain was judged. We see in the time of Noah. It is the same thing. Is it right? What happened in the time of Noah? Noah received redemption. And the whole world. It was judged. You understand that? That was that. Redemption, the seals, and the vows, which is judgment. You get the point. Huh? You see the jubilee fest. It is people that would have accepted redemption. And those who will be born, born upon the ear, are the people that receive a mark for rejecting the year of Jubilee. So you can see all these things. Like even the cloud. Praise the Lord. When it came, it is the revelation of the seven seals, the mystery of our redemption. But when it was turned to the right, he became the judge. The same God that brought redemption to you is the same God that he judged the world by rejecting the same word that redeemed you. So you begin to see redemption in the seals and judgment in the vow. In the vows. Are we together, friends? So, in a nutshell, you can see the church ages. They are clear, right? The seals. They are clear, right? First, those rider. You know those seals. The trumpets. They affect nature, the first four. The last three, the inhabitants of the earth. Are we together, friends? Now, what I want you to see is out of the trumpets come the vials. Are we together? Out of the trumpets come the vials. Now, we are talking about the mystery between the trumpets and the vials. Now, you see chronologically in your Bible. Now, you can bring that other diagram. Now you see that this is the chronology of the book of Revelation. Is that right? Chapter 1 preparing the scene of the ages. Which is 2 and 3. Chapter 4 and 5 the breach. Preparing the scene of the seals. Is that right? Chapter 7. It is the calling of the 11th hour. Jewish workers. No, 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 no. The calling of the 11th hour gentle workers. Are, are we together? Are we Jewish workers, rather? Because remember, the seals are for the Jew, for the for the Gentiles. Are we together? And in between the seals, the sixth and the seventh, is the Jews that are saved. 144,000. Are we together? And then eight to nine, we have the trumpets. Is it right? And ten, we've got, of course, ten one, ten seven, and 10, 8 to 11. But I don't know if you have something from 12. 11 going forward. Because when you talk about the calling of the 11th hour gentle workers, they are called in Revelation chapter 10. Are we together? And chapter 9 ends with the sixth trumpet. And chapter 11, is that right? It brings the seventh trumpet. And in between, is chapter 10. Do you have it or I shouldn't wait for it? All right. Now, we will be moving together while we are drawing and then you'll be understanding. Now, when we come to this point, we are going to start from uh, chapter 8, 9, 
And then we've got chapter 10. And then chapter 11. Are we together? We've got chapter 12. Are we together? Praise the Lord. Now, let me put 12 here. 18 years. 15. And 16. Are we together? Praise the Lord. Now, when you look at these chapters, praise the Lord, you are going to find out that chapter 10 is the 11th hour gentle workers. It's you and I. Is that right? And then 11, we've got the 7th trumpet. So the trumpets, they end in chapter 11. Are we together? The book of Revelations 11. It gives you the end of the trumpets. And now, when we say out of the trumpets, come the vials. These vials, you find them in Revelation chapter 16. Are we together, friends? Now, just, just be taking notes. It will be clearer when I bring it down. Now the vows, they begin in chapter 16. Are we together? So when you speak about the mystery between the trumpets, Amen. Trumpets, vows. Is it right? When you talk about the mystery between the trumpets and the vials, you're talking about chapter 12, 13, 14, and 15. This is actually the bridge between the trumpets and the vials. So before we come to the vials and find out what is between the sixth and the seventh vial, there is a mystery between the trumpets and the vials. And what is it? Revelation 12. Are we together, friends? And you see that Revelation 12, it is the war that was in heaven. Is that right? It reveals Lucifer in a spirit form fighting against Michael. Is that right? And when you come to chapter 13 of Revelation, you find two beasts. One from the sea, the one from the earth. And these beasts that you find in 13, it is the same Lucifer, but now in human form. Meaning the battle that was in heaven. The Lucifer, Lucifer, the spirit that was in heaven, who fought against Michael, is now in a beast, a man of flesh and blood. That's chapter 13. Is that right? And when you come to chapter 14, it's talking about the angel with the everlasting gospel. It talks about the first and the third angel first, second, and third angel's message. Is that right? Praise the Lord. And this angel, the third angel's message. I think I preached a sermon upon that. The third angel's message. Praise the Lord. Are we together? He's calling people out of the mark of the beast in Revelation 14. Are we together, friends? Alright, maybe let's read some of these things. Eh? Praise the Lord. But how many can see the transition now? Revelation 12, 13, 14, 15, these four chapters is the mystery between the trumpets and the vials. Is that right? And we see 12 war. 
in heaven. Is it right? Lucifer is the spirit. Is it right? They team that Lucifer is on the earth. In a man putting flesh. Is it right? Now you can actually see the execution of the five I wills. Because in heaven when he was cast down in chapter 12 of Revelation you are saying I'll be like the most high God. I'll raise my kingdom. I shall be worshipped. You, you get the point. And in 13, he causes all men to worship. Is the writer? They got a mark and they were worshipping him. So from Revelation 12 to 13, you are seeing his ambition and its execution. Because 13 is actually the fully fledged Satan's Eden. Yes, Revelation 13 is actually the end of time. You get the point. And the God of this evil age who's been worshipped is Satan. In Eden. And people are ignorantly worshipping the devil. Thinking they are worshipping God. So, so you see the point. His desires were executed. In heaven he could not be worshipped. That's why he was taken down with a third of angels. But here on earth, he is being worshipped. Let's read it. 12, we read it, isn't it? There was war in heaven. We read it, isn't it? And then that war, it was coming because of Isaiah. The enemy. He was found with iniquity in his heart. I will, I will. Is that right? And he was cast into Eden in Ezekiel 28. Is that right? Isaiah 14. Ezekiel 28. And when he was in Eden, woe unto the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea because the accuser of brethren has been cast down. You get the point? And from Eden up to Revelation 13 6,000 years he has corrupted the Eden of God and he has made it his Eden and now in chapter 13 what is happening verse 8 and all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world verse 8 Revelation 13 Are we together, friends? Is, is it clear? Let's come to Isaiah 14. I'm just trying to be simple. So that I won't just finish and people say, ah, we never got anything. Is that right? We read Revelation 12, is it? There was war in in heaven. And who was cast down? Lucifer. Lucifer. And the third of the angels. Now, we want to find out why he was cast down. Is that right? Now, verse 12 of Isaiah 14. Yeah. Yes, I have 40. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations? What over honey, unge rutomboni, nade di peni, yamasa se, watakiwa, ngani, wawera, hani pasi, pianya batu diwe. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. And will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the side of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Aba iwe, waba uchiri, nito konya makore eni, nito tika kurunoni, yanga, henenge inta, adinare, didamzimu, nito nito tika nito tika Hataba ya muranga enengei libuwia. Ni dan? 
Now you, you see what's happening. This is Lucifer. Lucifer. In heaven. He is ambitious. He's proud in his heart. And that pride is what caused war in in heaven. You get the point. And when there was war in heaven, he was cast down. Now, Ezekiel 28. If you read with me, from verse 12, son of man, take up the lamentation upon the king of Tyrus and say unto him, that says the Lord God that sealeth up the sum, the sum full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Mwana wa mutu, fusa chiriro, chakosi ya tiro, umubu zeuri, mune wabo te yehova uri, enewe, we waba u... Verse 12, brother, Ezekiel 28, verse 12. Just read it exactly the way it is, don't try to do nothing. Mwana wa mutu, fusa chiriro, chakosi ya tiro, umubu zeuri, mune wabo te yehova uri, Brother, just read the scripture as it is. All right, let's go to verse 18. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering. The sardis, topaz, the diamond, the burial, the onyx, the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbonacle, the gold, and the workmanship of thy tablets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. Waba uchinga wa ideni, watimu ni amdimu. Zinguwa zau, zoba zodara, zidaimane, zote, zamatombo, matuku, madara, machena, maseta, makubivu, amrogwe, adenga, Adikuro na daimane tuku. Eato goberwa ngamusuku. Wamakoro. Nizewa iterwa duba lau. Nizewa iterwa duba lau. Ubumbi hao. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth. And I have said thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Waba uchinga mukerupe we abumbia kosi. Waba uchinga mukerupe we abumbia kosi. Umutirelezi. Itari ndoba ndi u. Itari ndoba ndo uvechera. Jenezo taba ni ketua ya mutimu. Ewa ba uchi chimbira ubukati ya matombo anea penya asamuri. That was perfect in thine ways from the day that thou was created till iniquity was found in thee. Che wabumbia kosi. You see the point? The iniquity was the ambition in Isaiah 14. Are we together? And that iniquity is a writer. Verse 17. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before the kings that they may behold thee. Biru ya uyo pika unakahau wachinya utari uchitera madanga. Linga zwenezo nichi uisera pasi na ukumetera uba bono la mahos. You get the point. Now he is cast down where? Into Eden. Eden. You get the point. And that Lucifer, well, Lucifer from Eden up to now, he has been making his Eden. You get the point. And when he did that, his ambition was not taken from his mind. He still wanted to be worshipped. He still wanted to be a god. He still wanted to rule. That's why today, when we read in Revelation 13, all the people have the marker and they worship that beast. And that beast is the Lucifer who was in chapter 12 who fought with Michael. Is that clear now? Somebody say Amen. If you are hearing me, say Amen. Much better. Praise the Lord. Now, that's chapter 13. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. 
Now, chapter 14. Amen. Maybe we can read a little bit. We spoke about the angel. With the third angel is, is Malachi 4, actually. Is that right? He was warning people to come out of that place. When you come to verse 9, and the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead or his, in his hand, the same shall drink the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. Verse 9 and 10. Mungwa murungwa waburaru Aba tebeda achiamba Nga ipili huru achiri Arari mutu achira beda Lila libanda na chipa nzo chalo Atangane zarufayo rualo Kapanda yawe na musi Ukachanda chawe Na ene udo Nua veini ya mbiti za mzimu Ine ya pondiwa Isongo Tanganyi wa na zuingwe Kachinwero cha mbiti zawe Udo shenge zwa nga muriro Na tebeda varungwa is the warning not to take the mark of the beast, is that right? From the third angel. But when you come from verse 14 to 20, it is the vision of the Armageddon battle. Now, you see what's happening. The battle that started in heaven, chapter 12. We know where it went. From heaven, the battleground became the mind of man, which is the gateway to the soul of a human being. Is a writer. And that battle, which is raging in the minds of men, is what determines the eternal destination of a human being. Because if you defeat the devil from your mind, there is no way you can get into your soul. You, you get the point. Huh? That's why everything else uh, is finished in the mind. A young girl will not give a body to a boy if she was not defeated in the mind. You get the point. Huh? The boy talked to the girl and if the girl resists it in the mind, so I will not do that. Huh? There is no way that boy will sleep with the girl. You, you get the point. Uh. So, you cannot talk of a soul that is in prison or a soul that is possessed by demons uh, if ever the battle was not won in the mind. So, souls that are in prison right now are people that lost the battle in the mind. That's why you are in in, 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 in bondage by the things of the world. Are, are we together? So the same battle that started in heaven, it went to the mind of men. And Brad Branham calls it the greatest battle ever fought. And that battle in the mind, praise the Lord, that we are winning ourselves, casting down all reasonings and imaginations that exalted themselves above the word of God. We are overcoming the devil. The way, praise the Lord. In the way he comes to us. Praise the Lord. Somebody say amen. amen. But now when you come to Revelation 14 from 14 to 20. It's now the Armageddon battle. That battle that was in heaven in the mind of man is concluded in the battle of Armageddon from heaven to earth. Are you seeing what I'm talking about here? Praise the Lord. This is the mystery between the trumpets and the vows. Chapter 12, chapter 13, chapter 14, and when you come to chapter 15, it's telling you, it's preparing the scene as well for the vows. Praise the Lord. It talks about Praise the Lord. The seven angels with the seven vows. Is the writer preparing us to come to the vows themselves? Now, what I want you to notice, friends, in the midst of what I'm preaching, it is the identification of our story in the midst of all these 
revelations and all these mysteries. Because what is going to give you faith, what is going to give you a head start against the enemy, it is the correct interpretation of the word that will give you a correct understanding of your position. And that position is what will give you your entitlement. So, what you, de- what you deserve, what God has given you. Praise the Lord. Because it is that equipment that is based on knowing your position that you defeat the devil. Somebody say amen. If we are right here and I know my position that I'm a policeman in South Africa, I'm not going to run away from thieves who are robbing people with sticks. I'll know my position. I'll take a gun and shoot them down. You get the point? I know my position in South Africa. And that knowledge gives me assurance, confidence that I will not be defeated by all these thieves that are coming with sticks. So the same applies. You must know your position in the word of God. And that position, that knowledge, it will give you a head start against the enemy. You see why you are defeated many times. It is because you don't know your place. And you don't know your position. But when you start to know from the scriptures, somebody say amen. There are not enough demons in hell that will push you as a believer. Even right now, you begin to know that it means everything that I am is because my mind was defeated. It means I've got a weak mind. I'm a little bit loose about my thought life. So meaning if I can defend my mind. What kind of a human being will I be? It means all my victories are connected to that. Somebody say amen. Did you get what I'm talking about here? If your mind is guarded, your imagination, your reasoning, if it's aligned and guarded by the word, tell me if ever you can be robbed of the devil. The prophet says, if was impregnated. Eva was impregnated in her thoughts before the real act took place. It happened in her mind. Even you as the bride, the same applies. If you are defeated in your mind, the devil will take over your family. You see why people get angry. They are defeated in the mind. You see why people fight. They are defeated in the mind. You see why people give up. They are defeated in the mind. You see why people surrender to the devil. In the mind, they are defeated. But if you believe, praise God, you cannot be defeated. If you stand fast and say, I refuse, I refuse to be under the subjection of Satan. Your body, your word, will be in line with your thought. You see what makes God. God great. It is not his word. Neither is he his is it his manifestation? What makes God great? It is his thoughts. You get the point? Because a word is a thought expressed. You can never have a word without a thought. When a word is spoken, it's an expression of a thought. The reason why the word is eternal is because the thoughts of God are eternal. The reason why you are eternal is because you are in the mind of God before the foundation of the world. So the power of God revolves from his thoughts. And the power of a believer revolves in your mind. The power of a believer is in your thoughts. If your thoughts are holy, your words shall be holy. 
Your actions will be holy. If your thoughts are positive, your words will be positive. And your life will be positive. Because everything is coming from the mind. That's why you see in heaven. It is more like the thought life. Here on earth, it is the word, the thoughts of God expressed. So you see Lucifer. His thoughts are were rebellious in heaven. And when he became the word, when he was manifested, Lucifer was rebellious. Up to Armageddon, you can trace him from his thoughts. Somebody say amen. You are not greater than your thoughts. And you can't live above your thoughts. If you think you are defeated, you are defeated. You will never live above your thoughts. People can encourage you. People can tell you what is yours. But if your mind cannot conceive it, you will never live above that. Can I bring that back again? Your greatness is not connected to the people around you. Your greatness and glory is not connected to the things you have. Your greatness is connected to the thoughts you have. Yeah. Oh, praise God. God say, I know the thoughts I have for you. I'm talking about eternal thoughts. And those thoughts are powerful. That's why we are where we are. It's because this is God's thoughts about our lives. That we live above sin. That we overcome the enemy. That we live above every temptation. It's an expression of God's thoughts upon our lives. Now when you come to the breach now, this mystery between the trumpets and the vials, it is all culminating to the judgment of the whole world. Somebody say Amen. And it is in these four chapters as we are going to be tracing them that we are going to find out praise the Lord how everything else is going to end. Because when you come to chapter 16 as the vows are spoken one by one you now see that Everything had its genesis in chapter 12. Can you see that chapter 12 is actually beyond genesis? Moses said in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. But here John is saying there was war in, in heaven before there was a creation. Praise the Lord. How many, how many are catching it now? How many are seeing the direction? Are we moving together, friends? Praise the Lord. Listen to what the prophet says. Chapter 16, verse 1. Now, our kinsman is handed the seven sealed book of redemption from the original owner. The original owner. That's, That's God. God. When we lost it at the Garden of Eden through Adam, it went back to the original owner. But there's been a poacher on the land. A squatter of Satan, a poacher. All right. A poacher. A poacher, you see what they do at uh, Kruger National Park? When they go to hunt buffaloes. Those people would go in and hunt buffaloes illegally. We call them poachers. Poachers. Give us the vendor word. They are poachers. Trespassers. 
You get the point. These are poachers. Is that right? And then when you talk about a squatter, praise the Lord. It's the same, ne? Now, that's Satan. Now, listen to what the prophet is saying. But they, all right, we, we lost the title deeds. We, we lost authority in the Garden of Eden, condemned by representation. And that title deed, that book, that seven sealed book of redemption, it went back to the original owner. But there's been a poacher. A squatter. Alright. There's been a poacher on the land, not Oifara. That book is in the original with the original owner. But there's been a poacher on the land. And that Satan, he come over, he is a poacher. The earth doesn't belong to him. It belongs to God. But he is a poacher, a squatter. Man, I could say something right now, but I better not. Now, you see the picture that the prophet is trying to show you here. I want you to see the enemy with his correct credentials. The correct credentials. Because these vials is going to be judgment of the same. Satan is a poacher. He is a squatter. He has no legal rights. Even upon this earth. You, you get the point. Whatever he does. It's illegal. He has no authority that backs his actions. You get the point. That's why you find another angel. Coming down. Revelation 9. Satan fell down like. Lightning. Is it right? A fallen star. But Christ, Christ, he comes down. Even you and I, we did not fall from heaven. We came down. We were expressed into time for a purpose. You get the point? A poacher is a person who doesn't have a contract of employment. He cannot kill any animal in Kruger National Park. It's only a person that is working for Kruger that can kill an animal because they are begged by the law and the contract of employment. Does it make sense? Somebody say Amen. Did you get what I'm talking about here? Praise God. So here on earth, Satan, whatever he's doing, he's doing it as a poacher. As a squatter, is illegal. But you and I, whatever we do, is in line with our assignment, our purpose, our calling, which is the vision that God had before the foundation of the world. He wanted to see certain things. And He sent you and I. Praise be to God. You know, you, you begin to feel superior now against the enemy that fights you when you understand this thing. Praise the Lord. Somebody say Amen. He says, I can't say something, but I can say it. It is the title deed of our redemption. This seven sealed book is the title deed. You wait till we get into those seals. He breaks the seals. Reveals and gives us the inheritance. 
his inheritance to his people. He gives the inheritance that he inherited by becoming a kinsman redeemer and freely gives it to, out to us. And all belong to him. He is the one who redeemed. But instead of keeping it, himself, he gives it back to the people. That's his love for us. And Brabham says, oh. Now, now, you see what we're talking about here, friends. The seven seals, the revelation of our redemption, which is the title deed, is given to us freely. Now, what does it do to a believer? It opens these things that we are talking about. This divinely revealed mystery truth. It is the contents of the seven thunders. It is the contents of the seven seals. And it is in these things that you and I can prove the love of God over our lives. It is through these seals, praise God, that proves us to be the heirs of all that he died for. And when we are trading on these things, we are not trading without authority. What we call presuming, but there is authority. And that authority is from heaven because we are working with the interpreter himself of the very word and is the Lord Jesus Christ. He rightfully divides the word. He positions it in our lives, in our age. He sets it forth that it can bring out what he desired in his mind. Praise be to God. Somebody say Amen. If Revelation 13, it is the manifestation of Isaiah 14, which was the thoughts of Lucifer. How about the thoughts of God? Are they not manifesting too? I'm talking about this mystery between the trumpets and the vows. If 13 shows you the manifestation of the thoughts of Lucifer, what about the thoughts of God? Would they not be real too? And which one is more powerful? The poacher's thoughts. A squatter's thoughts. Or the thoughts of the original owner. Who's having the book in his hand. Somebody say amen. His thoughts ought to be greater. And those thoughts, you must know them for you to overcome. It is what is in that seven title deed. That's the, those seals that are locked, they contain the thoughts of God over our lives. Praise God. Amen. Listen to what the prophet says here. He says, Now, you see what coming down to Jordan meant. We are down here now. Let's cross over now. Let's quit playing. Let's cross to the other side now. Because it all belongs to us. It's all ours. Them visions have never failed. Are you hearing that? You are not a poacher, you are not a squatter. So it says quit playing. Cross to the other side. Because it all belongs to you. It's ours. Them visions have never failed. They can't fail because they come from God. I believe it with all that is within me. We are not the hireling that will run back into the wilderness. We are not the hireling. Is that right? People who are just, they're not owners. 
the hireling, a hired person. But to what? But was a full petey. We will cross Jordan. The separation. Paneka. God. Mutimu. Break to us. Or it be a second. No, he's asking. God. Mutimu. Break to us. Or it is there. No, 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 no. He's asking. It's a, it's a request. The The prophet is saying, God. Urimutimu. Break to us. Or in what era? All right. Or in what era? God. Mutimu. Break to us the seals. That's on the back of the book. Is that right? That's a request. God, break to us the seals. That's on the back of the book. Let us enter into this great place now. For Joshua divided the people their inheritance that God had left for them. Somebody say amen. There is a place that we must enter into. And God has to break them seals. He has to break what was at the back part of his mind to you and I that we can enter into this thing. Now what is to enter into the promise? Now you must understand it is tapping into the promise. It is tapping into the word. Not as an intellectual. Not as a student. But as a man qualified to make alive the scripture of your day. To see modern events made clear by vindicated prophets. Somebody say amen. There are few people on earth that will be able to identify God in the word. And God now. There are few people on earth that will be able to identify their part in the Bible and their part now to marry the two together that you can see that we are not just living in a world that has no direction but we are living under a dispensation that is loaded for this season and there are performances that are expected of that season. Praise be to God. Do you see what we are talking about here, friends? How many love the Lord? Are you seeing where we are coming from? As you see this juncture that uh, we are looking at. I want you to hear what the prophet says here. He says, I will put my covenant with them. And I will be their God. And I will is be not conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of our mind to do the perfect and acceptable will of God. Now, now, now that we have been saved as we are and that we have been filled with the Holy Spirit as we have now, we want the mind that was in Christ to be in us that we might be transformed from the natural things of life and be brought into the perfect will of God by transformation of God's spirit by his word. Renewing of your mind. Now listen to what he says. The things that you once thought upon a precious lay. The things that you once thought upon to be precious. Lay that aside and be transformed to something else. To what you was at one time. To what you are now. 
Oh, that's what we all want to know. So that is another thing. How to do it. We are here. We, we love him. With, he saved us. And now we want to know what to do. Somebody say amen. Are we having people like that? Praise the Lord. That are saying we want to know what to do. Praise the Lord. Somebody say amen. You're not just living. You, you, you want that mind, that thought of God. That eternal thought he had. You want it to transform you. To manifest the word of your day. You want to come to a place. That the things that you want thought is precious. You put them aside. You are transformed. Into what God wants you to become. And now you want to know. What to do. He says, and we were trying to take a little step this morning to raise up just a little bit higher. Now we want to be transformed ourselves by the renewing of our mind. See, not what we have on this earth. Is that right? Not what we have on this earth. What we are going to look for on this earth. But what we are coming to in the world that is to come transformed by the renewing of our mind. Somebody say amen. I believe in all these things, friends. As the bride of Christ located at this junction given the ability to look into all these things. It must bring us to a place where we should know what we are supposed to do. And how do we know that? When our minds are transformed. Having the mind of Christ is eternal thoughts. And I'm firmly sure that if really you are the bride. There has to be a clear manifestation of the thoughts of God in your very life. Somebody say amen. Praise the Lord. Are we together, friends? Praise the Lord. Let's read this part together. Revelations 14. 40. Amen. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns. All right. Sorry. 14. Verse 14. 14 and I looked, 14. and behold, a white cloud, and upon the cloud one set like unto the Son of Man, having on his head a golden crown in his hand. A harp, a sharp sickle. Dara Beresa, Ari Gorelichen, Oturo Kalo, Achingam Ramutu, Ena Zanga, Lamusuku, Kato Yawe, Chandani Chawe, Ofara, Rukwea, Rabuan. And another angel come out from the temple crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud, Thrust in thy sickle and reap. For the time is come for thee to reap. For the harvest of the earth is ripe. Ha bamwa murumwa nduni ketwa achibizerera odura odurao. Ha bamwa murumwa nduni ketwa achibizerera odurao. Ka gorenga ipili uru achiri. Rumera rukwea ruao. Ukane gauri chikati cha ukana chosuika. And he that sat on the cloud thrust in his sickle on the earth, and the earth was reaped. Odurao ka gore aposa rukwea ruawe kashango shango lakani. And another angel came out of the temple which is in heaven, he also having a sharp sickle. And another angel came out from the altar which had the power over the fire and cried with a loud cry to him that had the sharp sickle, saying, Thrust in thy sharp sickle and gather the clusters of the vine of the earth, and for her grapes are fully ripe. <laughs> Abamwe murumwa kale tare ene arena manda aubusa muriro 
abizerera ula anarukwea rwa buhari nga ipili huru ari rumera rukwea rwa au rwa buhari ukwa tezu tokora jamu tokora wa shango nga uritoro zao zobi ipa and the angel thrust in his sickle into the earth and gather the vine of the earth and cast it into the great wine press of the wrath of God. And the wine press was trodden without the city. And the blood came out of the wine press even unto the horse bridles by the space of a thousand and six and furlongs. Murumwa po sarukwerwa webu katia shango. Mutokora wa shango wapati wa zutokora zaposwa Upenderoni ambiti kuru zamzimu. Ambo pondi wa pala upenderoni nda amadi. Ambo pondi wa pala upenderoni nda amudi. Maropa abba upenderoni achirera. Achikuma gamihara ya zimbiti apeza zistadia za zikiti na madana matanu achiru. Praise the Lord. Now this is the vision of Armageddon. Praise the Lord. And it's a manifestation of the exact thing that took place up in heaven. How the enemy was defeated. He will be defeated again in the same manner. And now there is a glorious part that must now be made clear to say you as the bride in the same picture praise the Lord. If the enemy fate is going to be the same fate as we see in Revelation 12, Isaiah 14 and Ezekiel 28. Praise the Lord. What ought to be the fate of the bride? I'm saying. Praise the Lord. Listen to what the prophet says. Take these few hurried up words, Father, and sing them down in the hearts of the people just as they have need. Just in a few moments now, the people will be coming by here to be healed. There will be those here, Lord, who are blind, afflicted, crippled, and sick, and all kinds of diseases upon them. Satan done this evil thing. Father, them poor people, Lord, they would have come here and they didn't believe they could be healed. Now he says, you said we overcome by the blood of the lamp and our testimony. Now you see the pride. Somebody say amen. In that great battle, praise the Lord, the, the bride, it overcometh by the blood of the lamp and the testimony. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. He says again here, Now listen, when you're watching for the Holy Spirit, now there's nobody believes in shouting and rejoicing in the Spirit any more than I do. Because I believe that anything that has got life has emotion. If your religion hasn't got some life in it, you better bury it. It's dead. It brings emotion. Is it right? He says, but while we are coming to God, let's come reverently, quietly, listen to what you say, and then when he does something for us, that's the time to let the glory of God ring from our hearts. Is it right? Be reverent, watch. 
And if out in the meetings at any time you feel that God has poked your heart, while this line is going through, then you raise your hands and say, thank you, Lord Jesus, for healing me. Then tell somebody sitting by you, by the blood of the lamp, and their testimony, they overcame. Is that right? You overcome by the blood of the lamp and by your testimony. And if we can just have faith and believe in the Lord God, that he will do these things for us. So it brings back the bride. At the climax of overcoming. By the same way she did. Back in eternity. The lamp of God. Was slain. In the mind of God. Before the foundation of the world. And this is how we kicked him down. Is it right? And when we come to the climax. Praise the Lord. That battle when it ends at Armageddon. It is the same thing. That will defeat the enemy. And the bride. Should stand as the pure man manifestation of the thoughts of God as much as Lucifer's thoughts have been manifested in our day. Somebody say amen to that. So as we will move forward we will be looking further on these things. But may God give us grace. Praise the Lord that we understand that this breach we must understand that this mystery between the trumpets and the vows, it will lead us to Armageddon. It will lead us to the judgment of the whole world. The judgment of the beast. And in all of that, you as the bride, you have a part that you must play. You must be able not to trace the thoughts of the enemy but you must be able to trace the thoughts of God down through all that and see how you come in somebody say amen we, 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 you, you must see how you, you are part of that story of victory somebody say amen I'm sure we have seen all the negatives of the world we have seen how the devil is taking over but the hour is now you see yourself in that great picture to say how do I fit in and then you come and say I know what to do because the prophet says you must say what should I do you only know what to do when you pass through that thought line of Elohim right into our day. Blessed be the name of the Lord as the musicians come. Praise the Lord. Now, We will take this further by the grace of God. But for today, you must go and study these chapters by the grace of God. Just go read from chapter 12, 13, 14, and 15 of the book of Revelation. Most of which are the things we have preached in other sermons as independent subjects. But we need to really come to understand what is there. Now, Brother Branham, when he talks about the bridge, you'll be preaching about the bridge between the seven church ages and the seals. And then when he speaks about Revelation 7, he doesn't call it a bridge. He calls it an interval. 
Now you must see the difference when we talk about the bridge and an interval. Praise the Lord. This mystery that we are talking about is not an interval. Is it right? It's a bridge. Because an interval, you find that the seals were in chapter 6. And chapter 7 comes as an interval. And then we come to chapter 8, which is the continuation. Now, this interval, it doesn't break the continuity. Are we together? Pray, praise the Lord. It's an interval that comes, an interval of time. Are we together? But now, when you come to the breach now, which is your Revelations chapter 4, four and five. It is displaying a story. Are we together? That took place. And I want you to look at Revelations chapter 12. 13, 14, 14 and 15 as a story, as a bridge that stands between the trumpets and the vials. And then when we come to the climax thereof, you must have understood them independently. Praise be to God. How many are seeing this clearly? Somebody say Amen. How many are seeing this clearly? Now, where we are targeting is this part of the scripture. You can read 16 as well. But listen to what the prophet says. Praise the Lord. Now, first, the scripture is Revelation 16. This is where we're coming to. It says, And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried, and the way up, dried up, that the way up of the king's of the east might be prepared. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are the spirits of the devils working miracles which go forth unto the kings of the earth and the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments lest he walk naked and they see his shame and he gathered them together into a place in the Hebrew tongue Amma Gideon Wama shudu ndu yo anea kuna kisa nguvo zawe za zura zota hapa asa dushika hapo unema dokuma nganyeru wa hone unenga rurimi wa chiebe ruwafi di Amma Gedo verse 12 to 16 the sixth vial. I read the sixth vial up to 16. Murungwa wa utanu na buti hii ate urela mzio wa we ngomu mnamboni muhuru wafurada madhi awo aka uri hufure ndira ya mahosi abu paduwa nabona mnamboni walila nabona mnamboni walila likwena na mnamboni walivanda na mnamboni wamporofita wa ujipa Uchipami muya miraru yadi yadi chika ine yanga madura nga uri dimi muya yama demoni mavi ita o madembe iya o amahosi alipasi lote uyo varamba uri bade nduani yalone tuba di guru damzi mubusa ote asizo nita ungamba hapa mashuto acheni sao aron Aron ra hongo wazawe asa do chimbira epeti abona ra ushona awe oba kuvanga nia petu bunenga chiebe ruapi am arama gedo. And the seventh angel poured out his vial into the air, and there came a great voice of the temple of heaven, out of the temple of heaven from the throne, saying, "It is done." Murumwa wabuta nuna na bubiri ote buchela mtio wawe. Muyani ata ipili urunduni ketwa lichipa kakurunoni lari. Zovre. This is where we are coming to. 
and go with this thought. Abraham says, now the battle started in heaven. The fourth seal. It will be finished on earth in the form of Armageddon. Is it right? Now the battle started in heaven. It will be finished on earth in the form of Armageddon. That's Revelation 12. Started in heaven. It will be finished on earth in the form of Armageddon. Praise the Lord. That's your 14 and 16. Now let's watch and see it unfold. Maybe we can unfold it. The Lord help us right now to do this now. Watch it unfold. The mysterious rider watch what he does now opposed refused to repent and to go back to the original blood word the word became blood and flesh he refused to go back for it to it he is antichrist is it right? the true word bride is it right? now he is opposed to the true word bride he takes his own bride he opposes this true bride and he takes his own bride and brings it to him in a form of religion called creeds and dogmas see and now seeing the holy bride him Seeing the holy bride, that rider, he's against her. But he forms his own bride called Antichrist by Antichrist teaching, which is contrary to Christ. Now, how shrewd is he? Now, instead of having a unity of love controlling worship under blood, he's got a denomination. Instead of having the word, he took creeds and dogmas and so forth. Now, I'm jumping. Gathering them on their mixed color horses. He's gathering this thing together. Mixed with creeds, denominations, main made doctrines. Is it right? Show a mixed color, mixed color of dead pearl horses of the world. Now that's right, mixed colors of the dead. Worldly form of the pale horse, oh my. Worldly form of the pale horse. He says, oh my. No holy blood of the word at all and watch from the four corners of the earth they gathered them gathered them to Armageddon the Bible says I'm trying to think of the scriptures we've got them wrote down here I ain't called them but just they are written down see gathers them together to the great day of the battle of the Lord. He says, watch. So that's what we'll be looking at in depth. From 12 up to the vials, which is the ultimate judgment started in heaven, came into the mind and will be fulfilled in flesh and blood. But you as a believer, there is a position that God is expecting to see you in all this or else certain things will be fulfilled and then you say I thought the Bible had said this must happen and God will say yes Elijah came and you knew him not you have done unto him whatsoever you have listed 
These were people that had walked with Christ. But they didn't understand him. And the purpose of his coming. They knew him in the flesh. But not in Revelation. They walked with John. They ate with John. And John handed them to Christ. Is it right? But yet when he left. They were asking. Where is Elijah? The scribes say Elijah must first come. Christ was worried. These people were walking with Elijah. And I was given these people by Elijah. And they are asking me. Where is Elijah? These are the things. That you must not ask. Whether they have been fulfilled or not. From Revelation 12. Coming up to 16. You mustn't wake up and say. But what? how come? They speak of the rapture. How come this is now happening? It meant. You would not have understood this message by the Spirit. Somebody say Amen. We want to take a song as we allow this word to come in us and meditate on it and say, Lord, may this sequence be in us that we understand. We are the living reality as we take that song. God sent a promise. God gave a promise to his bride in this last day. Kings and priests. Lord, forever we following an eternal order way beyond humanity. Lord. 
together now. Faith relates. Faith relates to Melchizedek. And we are. And we are the faith. Faith is the substance. Faith is the substance. Thank you, Lord. God in flesh
But with all these things, I want to know what to do. From you, Lord, what do you want me to do as a woman? What do you want me to do as a man? As a parent, what do you want me to do? As a wife, as a husband, as a child, what do you want me to do? If that is your desire, don't hesitate to raise your hand to the Lord. As you be opening your heart and whispering to him, out of the troubles comes the vows. Who does it call? Israel is gathered. What is left? Judgment. The vials. But in between, there is something you must do. confronted with. Oh God, we need to know what to do at this juncture. There's a lot of voices. It's a crossroads. Many directions leading to many places. But yet we believe there's a special place that you have predestined for your bride. Amid is the world that is just about to fall into Armageddon. Yes, out of the trumpets come the vials. And we can see these trumpets, them trumpets, is the calling out of Israel. And we can see Israel is a nation now. They're waiting for their atonement. And what follows would be the violence. But there is a voice of the third angel, a message, warning us not to get a mark. May this voice, this message show us what to do as believers, as men, as women. May we be empowered by that mighty knowledge that Lord, through your grace, we can walk this earth not with presumptions, but with divine certainty tracing not only the line of the thoughts of the wicked one but also your thoughts about us that we can see them manifested in our day or renew us may we walk with that title deed may we recognize that we are rightful heirs may we not be taken over by a butcher as water I pray for a supernatural grace and anointing upon this assembly. All these hands that are raised unto thee. It's children who are saying, what should we do? We don't want a casual knowledge of the message. We want that in-depth understanding of your thoughts. Because it is through your thoughts that we can be led to become that word image. I pray, King of Kings, that you may grant even this moment in time. Oh, we can see clearly. 
We don't want to wake up and ask things that are being spoken today. That was this not supposed to happen? But Lord, we want to know you in spirit and in truth. Not just following without understanding. They followed John for many years. They saw him do all the great things, but they never understood who he was. We see all these great things happening. Help us to understand them in light with your scriptures and your word. And then we will know what to do. Because the season will be made clearer. Oh, grant it upon every life. May the revelation dawn upon every soul. May we walk out of this building with that enlightenment and assurance. You said, I thank you, Father, for you have hidden this to the wise and prudent. But you have revealed to the babes such as would learn. We are the babes. Help us to conceive your simplicity. Help us to walk and be led by it. That greatness may be manifested. As we go home, keep us under that anointing to study your word, to study this mystery between trumpets and the vows. Up until your Holy Spirit will come upon us and make it clearer through your message that you sent through your prophet. That is our prayer. That is our desire. Take over our souls now. And our being. And anoint our desires. That they may be able to produce the real thing. Not only just desire without revelation but desire with understanding, wisdom and skill that we can interpret our day with precision may the pillar of fire that is spoken to us go ahead of us as we go our way to our respective homes away from this tabernacle but not away from your spirit that we meditate on the same day and night until we meet even for the next service grant it king as we surrender and commit all in your hands in Jesus name as we give a hand of prayer. Amen and amen. We are his only word. We are the
give a hand of praise unto him. Blessed be his holy name. Christ manifested in us. As we rise to our feet. We've come to the end of our service. We are going to meet again on Tuesday. By the grace of God. Let's come pray it up. And uh, expecting to hear from the Lord. Praise the Lord. We want to take a song. Fly so high. Amen. How many would want to fly? Where no other bird can fly. Praise the Lord. You only take eagles under the eagle prophet message to soar to these great heights. Praise the Lord. Without Malachi 4, you will be lost in this scriptural maze. In this puzzle. Is it right? So it had to take prophetic insight to bring the bride where we, she is and where we at. So we want to sing this song. As we put our hands together. Where the cattle 